Um, what I'm hearing is uh, if you're really short-term thinking, you don't have a good grasp of reality, either short-term or long-term, you're going to fall for whatever comes up that you want. That you want, you're, you're yeah. Rarely gonna call, you're rarely going to fall for something you don't want. Like, nobody's coming up to you and, and saying, you know what, uh, you're going to feel really, really bad about this, but mm -hmm. you should take these drugs. Yeah. Because they'll make you feel really, really bad. <laughs> In um, fact, that's why I don't smoke. Because my, I, my aunt was smoking one day, one of my aunts. Uh, and I said, can I, can I try that? I was probably 10 years old. And she they, said, they sure. Did you smoke a whole pack? No, what she did mm -hmm. is I put it in my mouth and I just sucked some smoke into my mouth and then blew it out. She says, no, no, that's not how you do it. The way you do it is you have to suck it into your lungs. You have to go and take a deep breath through your cigarette. I did that and just about coughed my lungs out. And I thought this was the most ridiculous thing uh, simply because I don't want to feel like I'm going to die. And I thought I was going to die because I couldn't breathe because I had all that smoke in my lungs. So that cured me. Although uh, people will smoke for other, they, people don't smoke, I think, for the immediate feeling of that smoke in their lungs. There's other reasons. Yeah. Uh, and coolness it, like, factor. The other thing I would say is like, um, what I'm hearing is if you're, if you're in that constant battle of, external forces wanting to deceive you. And if you're watching this and you're, and you're going, oh, I don't believe in this spiritual stuff, um, in your head, if you are a, uh, on the left-hand side of the political aisle, think Fox News. You're, you're being deceived by Fox News all the time. Other people are being deceived by Fox News all the time. If you're on the right-hand side of the aisle, just put CNN where I said Fox News was. You, you've got... <laughs> people wanting to deceive you and that's a constant battle whether it's social media family it, it could be anything and yeah there is a spiritual component to it but uh, a lot of it is just people want to be able to get what they want and they're going to get it through mm -hmm. you it's called a human nature yes. human nature coupled with physical drives equals disaster hey, but and we I need think more Kirk, like you you use the term human nature i know what that means yeah. but if you ask the regular person on the street are humans good or bad oh they're humans are good yeah there's bad <laughs> humans but most humans are good and i think that's one of the biggest problems we have in society today, today is people just don't recognize how bad we are yeah yeah, well, that's part of deception is that you think you are the, whatever it is that you think is right, you tend to use that as the standard. So if you're, what you think is right is, is, is mobile, it's moving and changing, your standard moves and changes. But you, since you're in it, so to speak, there's no change within you. You think this is still right. I used to think this, but now I think that because I'm more enlightened than now. But human nature, uh, yes, there is this, again, we are deceived into thinking that we're mere victims of our environment, that our environment, if we could just, just raise every, all the children in a really good, wholesome, wonderful environment, there would be uh, no issues. However, having six kids, I know that they bring their issues into everyday life from infancy. So you will see two infants, you'll see, uh, or two toddlers, one has a toy, the other wants it, and they hit the toddler with the toy. They have never, like, our, I have, n that never goes on between my wife and I. That has never happened between them. They would never see that in our home, yet they thought, they, they brought that into the home all by themselves by being toddlers, and they would take each other's stuff, and there'd be huge squabbles break out. They never saw the adults behaving that way. They behaved that way, and they would tell lies later on when they got to talk well enough, and you would say, who did this or that, or how did this happen? And then out comes a lie, and we never taught them to lie. And furthermore, they never witnessed lies. We lived in a rural area, so they didn't have other kids to play with and learn bad habits from. They just simply had them within themselves. So 
What this illustrates is something that Alexander Solzhenitsyn is famous for saying, one of his quotes, and I'll paraphrase it here, but he says it would be nice if we could just look at um, evil as being those people over there or that system there and we could just get rid of that. But he says, no, the line between good and evil runs through every right through every human heart. So we see, yes, we do good things, but we also do evil things. And these evil things are things we bring into the world. We bring into our environment. It's not, uh, we're not victims of our environment. Rather, our environment is a victim of human beings. The collective moral decisions of humanity impinge on our environment and how how we'll raise the next generation. So if we're making bad decisions, the environment within which we'll raise the next generation of children will be worse than the one we were raised in. And what we can then assume is that they will be an even greater disadvantage because they'll have more to deal with because they're bringing in their own evil, theft and hitting and arguing and lying and combat and whatever. And that's just going to find downward trend in the environment. So the net effect of humanity is always, I would go on a limb here, I would say the net effect of humanity is always negative, that is on the long term. So you need some sort of external force to lift you out of that or to change the course of events, something higher and better than humanity to turn the tide. 